All right, welcome to Learn SDR. Today we're going to talk about phase shift keying. And the idea here is instead of changing the amplitude of the carrier wave, we're going to change the phase. And today we're only going to change the phase between two different values. We're either going to keep the phase as it is, or we're going to invert the phase. And so the idea is that we have a carrier wave that's being transmitted out of our transmitter. And it's, it's going at 915 megahertz or a gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz or whatever your carrier wave is. We're going to multiply this by our data, which is a wave that's either plus one or minus one. And so say it's plus one for a while, and then it makes a transition here to be minus one. And it's minus one for a while. And I'd say it makes a transition here back to plus one, et cetera. And if we take the product of these two things, what we see is we see a copy of the carrier wave as long as we're multiplying by one. But as soon as the data transitions, we're going to get a fast jump down to zero, and we're going to get uh, an inverted version of the carrier wave. So instead of starting at a maximum and going down, we'll start at a minimum and go up. And here the transition happens near a zero crossing. So instead of continuing in the same direction, it will invert, or sorry, the direction will change and we'll be back to where we started before. So this is not by any means the most efficient way of, of doing this phase shifting, but it's a, it's a, pretty, uh, it's a pretty clear way of uh, changing the phase of our carrier wave as it's being transmitted. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna modify our previous flow graph a little bit to accommodate this, this, new, this new way of, uh, of working. And we'll see that unlike the amplitude, amplitude shift keying and on off keying, where it was easy just to take the magnitude of the resulting wave, here we have to be a lot more careful. It's a little bit harder to measure the phase of the wave and the phase shifts. And we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about the complex representation of this real signal that's being transmitted. Let me share the screen. And I'm going to start with my amplitude shift keying flow graph from before. I'm going to change the name to phase shift keying, PSK. There we go. Okay, and I'll save it as, save it as PSK. Yes, save. All right. And mostly what we're going to do, conceptually, I could just change this list of amplitudes to be plus ones and minus ones. And this is, this is fine, except I'm going to introduce one more thing that'll make our lives a little bit easier going forward. And it is, uh, is to turn this into a string of bytes. Now we'll just type in the bytes as if they were ones and zeros. And I'll show you how to translate those bytes into plus and minus ones. So I'll type a particular string of bytes in here. And you could type whatever you want, but uh, a nice string has uh, a balanced number of ones and zeros. It sort of has a distinct pattern that you can pick up on. So zero, one, zero, one. So it'll alternate back and forth for a little bit. And I'll do three zeros, say zero, zero, zero. And then two ones. And then three more zeros. And then maybe four ones, one, 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 one. And there's just as many zeros and ones, so it's balanced. Uh, and, and we can tell the difference between zeros and ones because there's these runs of three zeros and there's a run of two and four ones. So we'll, we'll take that as our pattern to, to begin with. And I changed the output type to byte. So clearly this isn't gonna work. I need to somehow turn these bytes into ones and zeros. So I'll delete that connection. And there's a, a block that's that's pretty nice that allows us to do this. And it, it has a little bit of a strange name. It's called chunks to symbols. So if you just uh, look for symbols, symbols, yeah, symbols, something called chunks to symbols. And if you look, sort of oddly long, but um, it has an input, which is right now set to be an integer, but I can change it to a byte, and an output that can be complex. And in the symbol table, 
I just give it a list that becomes a lookup table for my input. And so my zeros, I'll turn those into minus ones, and my ones, I'm gonna turn those into plus ones. And I have to remember to change my dimension to one, because I only have a one dimensional table that I'm looking things up in. Okay, and I will connect my source to the byte input, and I will connect the complex numbers to my output. Now, while there's a complex number exiting this block, it only, it's only ever gonna be plus one or minus one. Well, it will shift the phase of this carrier either by zero degrees or 180 degrees. It will multiply the carrier by either one or minus one. And that's what I'm transmitting. And so let's look at what happens when I transmit that and I receive it. So let me get rid of all this stuff that had to do with receiving the amplitude shift keying. And I will play that and we'll look at what comes out. Okay, let me pause. This very clean one is the, the generated block that I'm transmitting. And you can see our pattern here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and then four ones, and then it repeats. And that's what's going to be transmitted. Uh, what we see in the rest of the plots are the received signal. And this is a little bit more complicated. And so let me zoom in on the time plot here. And let me pause it. And what we see here is, first of all, because our RTL SDR clock is not the same as our Pluto clock, we're not going to get back constants for our, our constant regions here. The, we're going to get back sines and cosines that vary in frequency at the difference frequency. And so here is our our fast pattern where it changes quickly. So here you see a phase change right there. That's one bit. You see a phase change right here. That's another bit. You see a phase change right here. It's another bit. Here's another bit. And then here, this must be our three zeros and our two ones and our three zeros and our four ones. And at every every time the phase changes, you see this jump here. And this, this looks a lot more difficult to decode and in fact, the first thing that we want to do to decode it is to try to match the frequencies of the two clocks. And we can do that in a couple different ways, but we, we will do that in software. We will not change the physical clock. We will, we will take this waveform and process it purely in software to undo this clock difference. So the first thing we want to do is figure out roughly how different the clock is. And for that, I'll look at my frequency spectrum. So if, uh, if everything is, is perfectly matched, this spectrum represents the difference in frequency between what I'm transmitting and what I'm receiving. And you can see that it's peaked, but it's not quite peaked at zero. It's peaked around what looks like, say, negative 14 kilohertz. So what I want to do is I want to shift this up by 14 kilohertz. That's my first, my first operation here. And as I shift this signal up higher and higher in frequency, what I'm seeing here as these sines and cosines, uh, they represent the difference in frequency and they should, they should decrease. Uh, the difference in frequency should get slower and slower and slower. So let me do that. Notice that the amplitude of this signal in our constellation plot is pretty much always the same. It's always constant amplitude. And you can see that just here, the amplitude of, of my uh, real and imaginary parts is always the same. So let me shift this frequency, not by shifting the hardware clock, but by multiplying what's coming in by a complex exponential. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this out of the way and disable it just so I don't have too many plots. And I will make a complex exponential that shifts it up. So I need a signal source that outputs a complex exponential. And sample rate for that is sample rate. That's fine. The frequency here, I want it to be, I said around 14 kilohertz, but I'll, I'll call that offset. That'll be a, something I'll put on a slider, an amplitude of one. That's fine. A signal, a complex exponential with an amplitude of one is a, is a pure phase that will rotate around the complex plane at some, uh, some particular speed set by this, this frequency that I've called offset. So let me put offset on a range slider. 
main slider for offset. And my default value, I said it looked it looked like we were slow, or sorry, it looked like uh, we need to shift up by 14 megahertz, so I'll or 14 kilohertz. So I'll make this default 14 E3, and I'll make the range quite big. I'll go from minus 100 kilohertz to plus 100 kilohertz. This might be a, a bit much for for this, but it'll give me it'll allow allow me to uh, to show you some effects that I'm interested in here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take the output of my RTLSDR and without changing the hardware clock, I will multiply by my complex exponential. And remember, multiplying by a, uh, a complex exponential that's that's spinning around is going to shift the frequency of my signal. Okay, so now let me let me show that. So in all these blocks I've disabled, I'm going to copy them and have the same set of blocks, which I will enable. And now I will connect all those blocks and we'll look at the shifted version. Okay, so let me, let me play that and we can see what we get out for our phase shift keyed waveform. All right, so this is our, our new waveform that's shifted by almost the right number. And if you look at my frequency spectrum, it's peaking much closer to zero here. But you can see that I'm not quite perfectly tuned. So let me see if I can grab this slider and tune it ever, ever so slightly up or down. Uh, I gave myself a little bit too much wiggle room here. So as I get closer and closer to the right offset frequency, you can see that within each phase uh, phase block, I'm getting closer and closer to multiplying a constant by plus and minus one. And if you look at my uh, my constellation plot here, you can see that as I'm getting closer and closer to the right offset frequency, my uh, my real and imaginary parts are moving around slowly, but they're almost always uh, 180 degrees from each other. So I have two little groups of points that are 180 degrees from each other and they're, they're sloshing around slowly uh, depending on how, 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 uh, how much my offset is. So I think I gave myself a little bit too much range here. Let me close this and I'll, uh, I'll go, let's go from uh, maybe uh, 13 up to 15 for my particular frequency offset. All right, now I'll be able to slide the slider a little bit more gently here. Okay, so that seems to be making things better. And maybe right around there, my frequency is pretty good. You can see that the clumps of points are, are getting, uh, getting closer together, they're changing. And what you see is they're actually spinning slowly on time scales I can actually see. So now my, my difference in frequencies is Sort of on the order of hertz, but it's not constant due to various temperature fluctuations and other other things. Uh, the the difference in in hardware frequencies is is always going to be there, and it's changing slowly. So we're going to need some way to track this difference if we're going to decode these uh, these ones and zero points. We need to somehow lock lock the frequencies in some sort of feedback loop. So that as, as they slowly change, we can compensate for that by kind of automatically adjusting the slider a little bit back and forth. And we'll use that to recover our pattern because it is there. If I pause this, let me, yeah, you can see that at least here in the imaginary part of the red part, I have my 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, and then I have my, my two ones. Uh, wait a minute, uh, looks like it's inverted because my, uh, my uh, string of, of four is, is, uh, is negative here. So if I were to just look at the imaginary part, it would actually be an inverted version of our signal. And that's just because this, this phase is constantly rotating. So sometimes it's, it's uh, 
what I put in, and sometimes it's inverted. So this is much harder to decode than the amplitude shift keyed or the on-off shift keyed, which is a special case of that. So we'll, uh, we'll talk more about, about how that works. Let me stop there. And let me give you two pieces of homework for this. And one of the pieces is maybe a, a hint going forward about how one might lock onto the right frequency. And the idea is to square the incoming signal. So if you square the incoming signal, you're, you're getting this product and you're getting that product again. So I don't mean magnitude squared. I mean, literally take the signal times itself. Then anytime I put in a plus one, that gets squared to a plus one. And every time I put in a minus one, that gets squared also to a plus one. And I have a complex version of this, this frequency here. And if I square that, if I have a signal that's e to the i 2 pi f t, and I'm multiplying that by either plus or minus one, and I take this whole thing and I square it, what I get out is that this plus or minus one just squares to a plus one, and I get e to the i 2 pi times 2 f t. So I should get what looks like a pretty clean tone at twice the twice the difference frequency. And uh, by looking at that and adjusting the slider, it's a little bit easier to adjust the slider to, uh, to, to zero that out. All right, so that's, that's the homework for, for this phase shift keying. Next time, we'll talk about not just modulating the real part by multiplying with plus or minus 1, but also modulating the imaginary part. And that's called QPSK, quadrature phase shift keying. And that's, I think, what a lot of you are interested in.